Bazam. What's up, guys? This is Dave Sharp. How you doing? Good to see you. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. Uh, let's see you guys in the comments. Make sure you guys can hear me and you can see me clearly. I'm excited to have our guest on, Simon. I'm going to bring him out in just a moment. Uh, but if you are brand new to this community, I want to say, like I say often, uh, get inside and go through our 15-day online business builder challenge. It'll change how you see marketing and making money online and building a business online. And if you can enroll in our business blueprints, do that. Take us up on that. I know it will change the game for you. It's done it for so many people uh, up until this point. And every single day, we will come on here Monday through Friday, and we will show you yet another person inside of our community uh, who's a real and regular, not a um, guru who's a professional speaker, not a guru who's a professional trainer, but somebody who's a, uh, a, a regular person just like you, just like me. And uh, at least I, I like to consider myself regular. I don't know what you consider me, but I consider myself regular. And I sure as hell know my wife and family considers me regular. Um, I don't travel and speak for a living. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not an author. I don't sell books and stuff like that and then go on speaking tours. I do affiliate marketing. I sell courses, coaching, and masterminds, the same exact thing that we teach here in Legendary Marketer. So in other words, we eat our own cooking, which is something that is different, and you don't see it every day in many industries. There's so many people uh, who pretend and play certain things on TV, but they don't practice them in their real life. And here, it doesn't get any more real than this. So with that being said, let me go on and bring on our guest for today, coming all the way from Switzerland. Simon, what's going on, my brother? Hi there. Hi there. Pretty good. How are you? I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm great. Uh, thrilled to talk to you, finally meet you. I've seen you a little bit on, on Facebook and, uh, you know, jumping around a little bit, and I'm, I'm thrilled to, uh, to have you on the show. Happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. You're so welcome, man. You're so welcome. So, um, you know, I'd like I'd like you to tell people a little bit about what you do uh, and and how you view your online business because it's not something for you that you want to fire your boss. You don't particularly hate your job. Um, you actually have a a career that you enjoy, from what I understand. Yeah, and, true. And, and now you've built up to the point to where your online business actually brings in as much revenue as your as your full-time uh, career. And so if you were to ever lose that, uh, from what I understand, that would, um, you know, you wouldn't be in such a desperate situation. So what, you know, I know I, I know I teed you up there, hopefully, but um Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and and how your online business works in your life. Yeah, uh, cool. Um, so I actually started to look for different ways to make money online when I was studying aviation and I had a lot of free time. And so I was looking for a way to make some money on the side. And they're like the obvious options to just go ahead and get a job. And for me, uh, uh, there was an option, but kind of I wanted to try to do something online. So I just went on YouTube like most people do. And I was looking for how to make money online stuff, then tried out a couple of things. And then uh, when I made my first ten dollars um, and when I, I was I, I started uh, creating Instagram accounts and I was selling large like, shout outs on those accounts. That's how I made my first couple of uh, dollars. And then eventually I started teaching exactly what I do on YouTube. And then I realized that um, YouTube is pretty cool because you can teach people, which um, is a very, you get a very cool feedback because people comment on your videos and you see how you help them. And then also with affiliate marketing, you can still, um, you can make a good amount of money, and especially in the on online marketing niche, in the financial niche. The, also the, the ad rates are pretty high and you have a lot of cool affiliate programs. So that's what I started doing like on and off. Like when I had like um, a lot of training to do, um, then I didn't really have a lot of time, but the YouTube is pretty like, people say it's like a train, so it's really hard to get moving. But when it's, once it moves, it's really hard to stop as well. And that's really true. And that's kind of what I like about that. And it gives you 
a really like a kind of a, um, a very passive income and also a kind of stable income that's like psychologically it's it's really healthy in my opinion and that's kind of what I, i've built up in the last couple of months and years mm -hmm. to where yeah now it's like pretty much the same amount as as i'm earning with my regular job that i still very much enjoy and i, I don't want to quit that but especially now in that time where um, with the pandemic and everything, especially my industry, like the aviation industry, got hit very bad. And it's still it's still very um, it's still on the ground, basically. And I well, I usually f um, work as a pilot and I haven't been flying since March. So since everything has begun. So especially in this time right now, I realize how important it is to uh, to have like a second income stream or even multiple income streams in case um, something happens. And for me, it gives me a lot of security and also like a way to to now spend my free time and actually increase my 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 online business to kind of grow that on the side so f yeah it's it's not that bad um yeah yeah it makes a lot of sense and thank god you have that and got into that right because who could have forecasted that we would be dealing with this pandemic that would have hit so many industries hard but if, but especially airlines and the same thing yeah. happened in the United States. Um, so uh, you, you, you mentioned you've done a couple of things, e-commerce, you know, of course the Instagram, helping people grow their Instagram accounts and so forth. Mm. And, now, and, and now you've sort of finally landed with affiliate marketing and mm. you, you, uh, you seem like a pretty entrepreneurial guy. Uh, so you've, you're not afraid to try different things and you may try other things in the future, but you seem to have planted your flag with affiliate marketing. Tell us about some of the business models that you've tried just in a nutshell, you know, with like mm -hmm. e-commerce and so forth. And then what you, what you see the benefit or what, why you favor or why you like affiliate marketing so much. Mm. Okay. So again, I started with, um, just trying anything to make my first couple of dollars online because I think when, when you start, you may, you, you want to prove yourself that it's actually working. And I had like a friend of mine who just started in e-commerce and he said also like the point where he realized that making money online is actually possible. Now this op the store opened and he can't go back anymore. And the same it was the same for me. So I created Instagram accounts. I used um, a software called Jarvi. Um, it used to be called something else to kind of grow those accounts. And then I started to sell promotions on those. And I also um, flipped accounts. I kind of grew them, sold them to customers. And also had like a, um, I had a growth service where I was uh, using that software to grow accounts of my clients. But um, for me, that was really like hands-on and really not very stable. So you constantly had to deal with customer support. And you had to deal with expectations of your customers, like unrealistic expectations. So we're constantly trying to communicate to them what is actually possible to manage their expectations. And a lot of my time, like th the more my business grew, the more my time was spent actually managing expectations and, and kind of figuring out um, different things, like algorithm changes that the platform made so that my business wouldn't die. And I kind of felt like I, I wasn't going anywhere and that my business wouldn't really have a long-term future. But at the same time, I kind of built up my YouTube at a, to a point where I had like a couple of hundred or even thousand, a couple of thousand subscribers. So, um, and that was like so, so chill that business. I could just sit down, create a video, put it out there and then just let it run. And Google and YouTube would, de would do everything for me. So um, I could go away like, for like three months and do like pilot training and I wouldn't have to worry about anything. And my income was still stable and it even grew because once um, YouTube recognizes that you have a good video, it will keep promoting that video. So that's how I got on YouTube. And that's also what I love about affiliate marketing that the, well, the basic things, you don't have to have your own product. You don't need to have customer support. And if you do, if you have a blog or a YouTube channel, it's crazily passive, the whole thing. And and like I have videos that still make me money that I've made uh, a year or two ago. Um, and the videos that I do now, like I, I'm, I did one today, that's going to be relevant for probably months or even years. So you can really stack up your, um, your videos. And I see it as you being a teacher that is teaching like 24 seven, but you don't have to be physically, you don't have physically to be there. 
which is pretty awesome with the technology that we have today. And if you combine that with affiliate marketing, then you yeah yeah you, you can you can make a good amount of money. Sorry, I muted myself because I thought I was going to sneeze there. <laughs> uh, it was just a false alarm. So I'm looking at your YouTube channel and what's it? How many videos do you think you've done total? I think it's um, almost 50, 40, 40 something or 50. All right. So, so two years ago was your first video. You, mm. I can see in, in what's interesting about this. I want to point out something about what you've done here. Um, Cause I think it's really interesting. First and foremost, you've got 26,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Um, for, it looks like for the first several videos, um, you didn't, you didn't even show your face. So for example, yeah, this, one, yeah. this one right here with 19,000, 20,000, 20,000, 14,000. Um, these are, these are, I mean, you ended up, you ended up in these first several videos, creating videos that got tens of thousands of views. What, that is a big deal. Did did these videos immediately? Th this is your oldest video. I've mm. sorted my oldest to, to newest. So your mm. old video is right here. Did that video immediately begin at first? And let me frame this a little bit better. Um, at, when you first said I, I first got on YouTube and I would create a video and I would go away and do pilot training mm. and the video would make me money. At first, I, I didn't really know what you were talking about because for so many people, um, their first videos don't do well, mm. okay? They're, 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 they don't. They can create a couple of dozen videos and, and never break 100 views on any of those videos. Mm. But your first videos have 19, 20, 20, 14, 8, 16, 131,000 views what do you, did they immediately begin to gain traction right away or did these take some months or even years to be able to build up these views on these first videos? Um, so the answer is no, they didn't um, just get views uh, from the beginning. Well, I mean, they, they once YouTube recognized that that's a, a video that people are actually searching for, then they ranked that video for the keyword that I was going for. And that's when it continually started to getting views. So most of these first videos, they didn't have a lot of keyword volume. So not a lot of people were actually searching for that keyword, but a consistent amount was searching for that keyword. So every week, a couple of hundred people would go and search that keyword. And some of them would click on my video and, and, and find that and watch it and get the result that they were looking for. And that's what's happened. Like for the first video, that's what's been happening for two years now. And that's why there's already a couple of thousand views there. So yeah, you can't go in with the expectations that your video will get tons of views from the beginning. What I think is very important that you from the beginning have a strategy that is working for your niche or for your YouTube channel. And for most niches, probably it's going to be search engine optimization. So you have to do your keyword research. You have to target long tail keywords in your niche. And there are certain keywords still, like I find them every day that aren't really competitive. So there are keywords that people are looking for, um, but there aren't a lot of good videos there. So what you can do, you can come in and solve that problem for them. You can go ahead and, and think about what video is that person that is typing in that keyword looking for? How can I get them the result they're looking for? And you create the best video possible that you can do. And then you just have to trust YouTube that they will, um, because they will test out your video. The same thing like online marketers, the algorithm works the same way. They will test your videos, put it on, um, put it on the search results. And then once they have a significant amount of, of clicks there, then they can de determine if your video is actually good. And you have to trust YouTube to be able to, to be able to do that and give that YouTube time to, to gather the data it needs to be able to rank your, your video and to show the video to the people that are actually looking for it. And that takes time. Unfortunately, if you have a small channel, you don't have any data there then it takes time for your for your channel to 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 grow and for me it, it wasn't like 
um, it, that's a cool thing with YouTube. You can do a couple of videos now and then uh, you take a break from YouTube because you think, okay, that's not working for me. I'm not getting any views. And then like a couple of months later, you suddenly see that your videos are picking up and then you're a lot more motivated to keep going. So yeah, it, it, you can just start creating some videos. But what I would think is the most important thing is to <laughs> don't create like one video a day or stuff. You have to create, I mean, you can do that if you can, if you can create one quality video a day, okay. But the thing is you have to do a better video than your competition. And that's kind of the key. Like I see YouTube channels that have like 300 videos on there and they have like 100 subscribers, which is like you burn out if you, if you work like that. But I have, I see channels that have over a hundred thousand subscribers and they only have like five videos. And once YouTube sees your video, because it's a lot better to have like one video that does very well compared to like 10 videos that all don't do well. So really focus on um, targeting the right keywords and then delivering on, on, on what people are looking for with that keyword and create the best video that you can. And again, don't think like you have to buy a good camera first. The thing people are looking for is the actual value and they want to have their problem solved. And you don't need to have like fancy gear for that love everything you said so true and if anybody's wondering <clears throat> what a long tail keyword is um it's it's exactly what you see on almost every one of these videos you've done this masterfully so this first video for example you got to think if somebody goes to google and they type in um if they want to learn about say for example vps server they're gonna they're gonna say can I get a free VPS server, right? Or that would be one example. But like uh, what uh, my point is, is that people are going to use the Google search bar to ask questions. A lot of times people are asking Google questions. They're not just typing in VPS server. VPS server would be an example of the short tail keyword of this particular video. If he just named this video VPS server, that would make a lot of sense. And if you were looking at, you were scrolling through YouTube, you wouldn't particularly click on that video because it doesn't tell you what that video is about. But if you think about how would people, how would you ask the question? How would people ask Google the question? And there you have it, how to get a free VPS server for one year, right? Somebody might say, how to how to get a free vps server right and boom that's my video yeah there's his video right there right and and if i'm looking at um if i'm looking at these three videos right this this particular video one of the things that you said was you have to make a better video than your competition and um if i was looking at these videos these three videos how to get a free VPS dedicated server. Okay, free VPS server 2020, how to get a free VPS hosting. But then your headline is simple and clear. I think it's more clear than the other two, how to get a free VPS server for one year, right? So um, that, <laughs> Bless you. I'm feeling allergenic, man. I've got a, we've got season change right now and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm feeling allergenic. So, okay. What else would, what other tips, what else would you say or suggest mm -hmm. in terms of YouTube? Uh, just uh, coming back to what to actually type in and what to create videos about. You don't actually have to go, you don't have, you don't have to come up with those phrases yourself because there are tools that um, that already gives you the phrases that people are looking for. That's the that's the beauty of it. You don't have to um, put all your eggs uh, on a keyword that you just came up with because you think people are typing that in. Because um, Google and other um, search engines they give you the data that uh, people actually type in. And with YouTube, it's very easy. You just, um, for example, if you uh, type in if you if you go to YouTube, type in VPS. And then um, you type in, or then there's like the autocomplete function, right? And there you see exactly what people are typing in. And if you, you can also like, you can put a star in front of VPS and then you see some more suggestions there. So star, uh, you, have, you have to actually put a star there. I think that's the wrong, 
like the star small thing and then put vps and then you will also get suggestions like how how can i get a vps and stuff like that i don't know that is that the star um star that's i i'll uh, put it in the chat maybe copy it you see that okay. hold on uh comments oh chat oh yeah uh, yeah so, yeah i mean i put that in that's if can Star you start and then bps yeah. oh yeah exactly and when you type in bp okay now delete the star again and put it again there sometimes it's, it's like and i'll put it again okay so here you get a lot more suggest like um you get more phrases where vps isn't in the front but it's also just it's in the phrase so there you get more suggestions and there's like tools called vidIQ, called TubeBuddy, and um, a lot more tools that gives you those. I actually have a complete tutorial um, exactly how I do my keyword research on how I do my, um, how basically do YouTube. I have like a SEO tutorial. Um, and another thing, well, the most, you have basically the customer journey from going to YouTube to actually watching a video all the way through. And you want to make sure on each part you you perform the best. So you want to have um, a good title. Like I said, the title um, based on search engine optimization, you want to have your main keyword in the title. And um, your thumbnail should, should just be, uh, for some videos, it makes sense to have the same um, words that are in your title also on the thumbnail to kind of uh, really hammer home the point that this is the exact video people are looking for. So if somebody types in how to get a free VPS and they see that on the thumbnail, then they are most more likely to click on it. Obviously, you want to have you want to have a high quality thumbnail. You can use Canva.com to create your thumbnails. It's very easy. It's very it's a lot more lot easier than uh, Photoshop. And um, you kind of want to make it stand out, so make it colorful and stuff like that. It really depends also on your niche, but type in, uh, look look what videos are performing well and then kind of get inspiration of what's already working. Then also you want to put the keywords that you're targeting in the description of your video. And that way you, you can also put some more keywords in there that are like supplementary. And that way you can get some more traffic to your video. Um, and then for the video, what's very important, especially in my niche, because I do a lot of tutorial videos, like how-to videos, people don't care so much about me as a person and I'm very okay with that. They care about the content. So I, I really try to avoid rambling on and I really try to get to the point as quick as possible. So what I'm showing them in the beginning of the video is exactly what they will get out of it. So I'm showing them the end result. I'm gonna tell them exactly what I'm gonna cover in the video and then we're gonna dive right in. Um, and then yeah, try not to ramble on, try to get to the point quick and um, What's also helping, of course, is to ask for engagement, um, to ask for likes, um, give people a reason to comment on your video. And um, because that shows YouTube that people are engaging with your video and that will help you in the in the rankings as well. So those are kind of the I think the main points of um, of, of creating YouTube videos in general. Yes. And I want to point out also the the so many things that you said are really important first and foremost that people don't particularly care about you like they don't yeah. care about they don't care about the, the the person sure is it nice if you can make it you know interesting or fun or you've got a nice voice or whatever like fine whatever believe whatever you want but the truth of the matter is like if you poll a hundred people um and ask them what they like of, of, of one of your videos it's got 10,000 views or 20,000 views or 100,000 views like they're not going to say oh Simon 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 same way that they're not going to say David 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 about any of our content if our content was just me rambling on you know th th nobody would care like the, you you know there's better performers out there guys like comedians and stuff like that 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 are more entertaining to watch than me or or Simon but they come here and they watch us because of what we're doing right now. Like, like we're going over actual real things that can help you in your business. That's why you care. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not silly enough to think that people are here because they're just so interested in me and my life. Sure. Is that cool that they can know about me, know my story. They, you know, some, 
fine. And that works well in your sales videos. That's why a lot of times that you see, if you watch our sales videos and stuff, you'll see a bit more storytelling there, but it's all there for a specific reason. It's all there to build up to the, the, the offer. You know, it's there to prove a point. I'm trying to convert them into a sale. Um, with your content videos, that's not particularly necessary. You can add a small call to action at the end to where you can say 30 seconds, 60 seconds. I mean, you can, there's, we have some YouTube marketers who do a bit more at the end in terms of telling their story, but it's important to, to, to with your YouTube videos to put that at the end of the video, not at the beginning of the video. Because at the beginning of the video, you like Simon said, it's so important to suck to get right to the point and to suck them in to let them know that what they were looking for, they can find in your video. Attention spans are so short that if you start every video off, like, you know, spending a minute or even 30 seconds getting to the point, you're going to lose so many people in that in that in that initial first minute. And YouTube's going to look at how many people actually watch all of your video. And that's how they're going to begin to rank your video higher because they want to rank videos higher that people are going, that people actually are watching all of it. And that's one of the, that's one of the metrics that they measure whether a video is, should be pushed higher in the algorithm on the first page is if people are watching the entire video. So if people are clicking off on your video in the first minute, that's telling Google, this is not the piece of content that people are looking for. I need to put somebody else's content up first in the search engines. So get to the point, I'm, I'm, I'm piggybacking on what you said because I think it's so important. Get to the point, plan and prepare. The other day on in, in, a, in our virtual mastermind, I'm gonna reveal a secret that Thomas Garrett shared that I thought was really powerful. He actually scripts his YouTube videos out, Simon. Now that may be a bit more, that may be a bit more anal. It may be a bit more obsessive than maybe what most people do. But the reason why he scripts them out and at the very least has a bulletproof bullet bullet list of what he wants to talk about is because he knows he has a tendency to kind of veer off and get into like rabbit holes. You know what I mean? Like I do the same thing actually. Okay, so how do you make sure that you stay on track when when you're filming? I actually, <laughs> I, I try to, um, before I, we, we went on this call here, I, I tried to film or record the intro for my new tutorial that I'm doing and I messed up like 20 times and now I still haven't done it. So I'm trying to try to do it later again. And I still, I mess up so many times that, and English isn't my first language as well. So I, I have to script my videos. And I know that especially the beginning of the video is so important and you see that um, in your analytics, you see uh, for every video how the graph kind of goes down in the beginning and for some videos it's just like it's just so bad that uh, like after five seconds like 50 percent of people have already clicked away and yeah that, that's why i i kind of i i script my videos as well like i try to not make it too robotic so that it comes across uh, you, you like like a like a robot but uh, I want to script my first couple of sentences that I don't go like, um, and, and I veer off like, like you said before. So, um, yeah, that's pretty important. But then with my tutorial videos, then I'm free and I can just talk and the same, I try to not be uh, like ramble on and stuff, but then it's, it's a lot more, um, I get a lot more time because then people have already decided, okay, I'm going to watch that tutorial, for example, but in the yeah. beginning, and also I have, I have complete videos where I just um, like the one video that uh, was like the most successful one where I explain how to how to make money on Instagram that has like uh, over a half a million views. I scripted the whole video. So I just um, went paragraph by paragraph or sentence by sentence. I, I talked into the camera and then I went and looked at the next sentence. OK, spoke that into the camera and so on until it's done. And it's very exhausting. I, I mean, I was really surprised how difficult it actually is like I, I have a lot more respect for actors right now because I, I mess up so many times and um, but at the, at the end of the day you have to kind of finish your product you have to finish your video and don't let um, the reason because you have a couple of M's or stutters um, not upload the video okay so just you, you kind of have to make the best you can but still at some point you just have to finish your product. 
I think it's like if you have a problem starting over a lot, I actually think to, to overcome that challenge, one of the best ways to do that is to go live. Yeah. Like occasionally, you know what I mean? Because if you go live, like look at me, dude, I'm having a friggin' allergy attack. I'm muting myself, blowing my <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're forced to get over yourself. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? You're forced to accept yourself a little bit more. And um, yeah, I think that, that, I think that, you know, there's a balance between um, preparing and making sure that you mm. hit, uh, that you hit the things that you want to hit and also being so critical that it becomes exhausting because I can, I can tell you one of the things that's most exhausting about creating content is if you're doing it over and over because you're starting over. Exactly. Like that, yeah. That's actually the exhausting part. That's true. Yeah. If, if you just, if you can just accept yourself a little bit more and realize that you're human and people know that you're human and dropping a couple of oohs and ahs and ums mm. actually makes you sound less scripted. So if you are going off of a bulletproof bullet point list, or if you're reading a script, when I'm reading a script, I actually insert a few oohs, ahs, ums <laughs> because I want to, I try yeah. to, I want to make it sound more natural. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you want to be also authentic, and and I have a good example as well. Like the the video that did the best on my YouTube channel was one where I just read some somebody commented um, something about actors inserting bloopers, and that reminded me. Um, if you want, you can play it. It's like the hundred day hundred dollars a day on Insta. It's like in the middle right now, and there in the cup in the first couple of seconds, I included like um, two bloopers where I actually messed up. And I don't know if that was one of the reasons that video performed very well, or you can just sort by most popular and that video will come up in the top. And uh, I, I don't know, maybe maybe that kind of- I'll share with you. Made me more authentic. And that's why people kind of watch all the way through because it was kind of like a pattern interrupt, something like that. And also they see that I'm just a, a normal guy. And sometimes I, I I love to kind of watch bloopers and stuff. So it makes people more more human. And obviously you can include that stuff as well. Five real ways you can make money on Instagram. These are all ways I have personally used or am using right now to make between $5,000 and $20,000 per month on Instagram. Now I'm not a famous influencer and I don't make my money with brand deals. So don't worry, you don't have to become famous or even show your face online for each of these methods. If you're watching my channel for the first time, my name is Simon. I've <laughs> If you're watching my channel for the <laughs> If you're watching my channel for the first Yeah, so that's what I meant. My name is Simon. I've been doing on it. Hopefully you guys can hear that. If you couldn't, you can go check out the video, but yeah, that's that's really that's really smart to leave that in and it definitely humanizes you a lot more. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about, man. I mean, mm. like I think nowadays more like I think nowadays people knowing that they're dealing with real people is important to people because everybody's so skeptical about whether, you know, people like stuff is real or not or stuff yeah. is a scam or stuff is, you know what I mean? Like it's that's a worldwide thing whereas that used to be like people used to be less skeptical and you know what I mean? Like, I know they're they're pretty skeptical in Europe, but like people used to be a lot less skeptical. And now because of the internet, there's there's so many different things and snake oil salesmen out there that- And they you know, should be because there's a lot of crap yeah, and a lot yeah. of scams. <laughs> I agree, man, I, I agree. I think people should be uh, skeptical. That's 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 important. It's, but being, uh, showing those kind of things is a perfect way to uh, humanize yourself. I love it and- uh, I, I, I just, anything that, that you can, I think natural stuff that happens is also funnier than when people try to be funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. You know, like that's anybody, I, 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 I don't try to be funny in my videos because I know it's just, it's, it's just bad because sometimes I see videos where people script script. um like, I don't know that they, they just, like there's certain uh, parts where it only works when it's like um, spontaneous and they just try to script that and it just doesn't work and it makes it kind of cringy and i yeah. try to stay away from that stuff yeah. yeah so i wanted to just point out one last thing um this has been a damn near a master class on this stuff so thanks man 
Um, your your channel only has. Let's count them out. So we're 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 damn sure on our numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six across. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty-two. Uh, wait, twenty-four, thirty, thirty-six, forty, forty-six, forty-seven videos. I want that yeah. to. I want that out that 26,000 subscribers. I want that to, I want to just let that sink in with everybody who's watching this here. Okay. 47 videos, not 300, not he, you, that channel's two years old. So you've been not, you know, not 700 videos, not a video a day, yeah. 47 videos videos on average so if we take 350 which is 350 times two is 700 roughly if we take 700 days and divide that by 47 that's an average of uploading a new video every 14 15 days so that's two a month on average right if we were to just average that out just i want you guys to really understand what Simon said before about the power of uploading a good video versus trying to just upload a lot of videos. Anything more that you want to say on that? Because I think that is just such a huge takeaway. And you, you have, you've treated your YouTube, your content like a media company. And I've, I've said this before, I've said this to people before, that everybody needs to think of themselves like they're a media company, like you're, a, like you're an advertising firm. Every piece of content needs to be well thought out. Would you ever, if you were working for a media company or a, a, an advertising firm, do you think that, that they would allow or it would be acceptable if a client came in and said, hey, I need an advertisement done for this? that you just held up a cell phone and just said, okay, say something, you know, like people in media, people in advertising firms, like to create these commercials that say so much that condense an entire message into 15 seconds that can be played on TV. It, there's some thought that there's some preparation that's put into that in order to make that one piece of content so powerful. So why would we treat our bit just because we're solopreneurs, just because we're working from home, we get a relaxed approach sometimes to creating content and marketing as if it, and then we, you know, like, oh, I'm just going to shoot something that I didn't prepare for and I'm just going to wing it and then be confused why it didn't do well. So I think one of the biggest takeaways that I'm taking away from this today, and I, I, I think I can speak for a lot of people, is the, is the emphasis of creating a quality video over quantity, especially on, a, on, a, on, 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 on evergreen content like blog posts or like YouTube videos. Would you agree with what I'm saying and, and would you add anything to that? Or would you, or, or do you disagree? I, I want to No, that's I, a, that's exactly, yeah. I mean, you, you have to look at it also like specific on what niche you're trying to create videos in. Like there are certain niches or like um, people that, uh, that it's really about the person of the YouTube channel. Then they want to see like you every week. They want to see a, a lot of you and, and you don't really have to like script out your videos and stuff. But in a, in a niche where um, people want to get a result out of a video, then they then you kind of need to to create a high quality video and um that's what you just explained is exactly the strategy that i have right now um because not every one of my videos is high quality so i have like 40 something videos and you can go through them you will see um, a lot of them aren't high quality they're just like not even my my face on it there's just like a screen capture with horrible sound just me explaining something but at the end of the day if if you are the only video and that explains how to solve that specific problem. And, and you can have horrible sound. You can have like, I don't know, some noise in the background. It doesn't matter as long as people get their problems solved. But then once somebody comes in and sees, hey, there's an opportunity, I have a better mic. 
So he does the same video with better audio, then he will outrank you and you, with your video. So what my strategy is, is I'm going to find keywords or I'm going to find content that people are looking for all the time, like tutorials. Let's say today I, I created a Shopify tutorial for uh, creating online stores. And I want to make a video that is better than most other videos. And that will also stand the test of time. So um, I don't want to have to update my video every couple of months. So I'm going to create like an, an entire from A to Z video because I know that's what people are looking for and that's what YouTube also likes to push to people. Um, so yeah, I spent a lot of time um, finding a good structure so that people can easily learn. And um, also um, I, I, I went through the tutorial like for myself like two or three times. So I made sure that um, I wasn't like um, stuttering at some point or not stuttering, I, I wasn't like hung myself up at some point, not knowing what to do. So I would yeah. find the smoothest way to actually build that store. So um, yeah, that, that's exactly what you said. You know, I want to end with a story. Last night I had a cigar out on my patio and I, I recently bought a really nice high-end torch lighter, right? And I was, I'm really excited about using it because it's kind of got some weight to it and it's you know, I spend, you know, 40 bucks on it or something like that. That's a lot of money for a lighter, you know? Yeah. But then I've got old trusty, this old trusty lighter. It's a torch that I've had for like eight years. You know, the paint's all peeled off of it. <clears throat> so last night I got my cigar ready and I got my nice lighter, my nice torch ready. And uh, I got, I cut it and I sat down on my, on my chair in my back patio and I went to light it and, brand new lighter doesn't work <laughs> shiny the guy at the store i stopped in a cigar bar just kind of you know put a mask on and went into the cigar bar like two weeks ago and bought a couple of cigars that i really like and i bought this lighter and he hyped it all up oh that's a really good lighter so when i'm i mean lighting your cigar for anybody who smokes cigars is kind of an important part of the process you know you're you want to you want to light it right so it burns right so it was such a disappointing moment and when it didn't work, right? And then of course I have to go in and I have to find my butane because maybe it's out of butane fluid and all this kind of stuff. And so I put the butane in it and it still won't, I, I thought I filled it up, it still won't work. So here I am fumbling around with this, this lighter for like 15 minutes. So what do I end up doing? I go back into my drawer in the kitchen and I dig in and I get old trusty, the old busted up, torch that I've had for eight years that works every single time. And the reason why, why I, I chose to tell that story and hopefully that sticks with people is that sometimes the, 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 you know, amateurish, the kind of a crappy microphone, you know, oohs and ahs and ums, right? When somebody's watching a video, they don't give a shit. They don't give a damn. If it, doesn't sound perfect, isn't recorded in a professional studio, as long as it gets the job done. As long as what they were, the problem, as you said, the problem they were looking to solve, they find a solution to it. Exactly. And that's what your videos do. And I want to commend you for that. And um, thanks for coming on and sharing your information. And I'd love to have you back on as many times as you'd be willing to come. For sure. Thank you very much for having me. It was a lot of fun. As long as you're not flying and you're at home. You <laughs> yeah, might... I got time right now. So, yeah. Well, I hope everything works out for you because uh, I, I know I can tell that you love to fly. It is a passion. I have a couple of pilot friends myself. I think they would do it for free if they could yeah. um, they do it so much. Um, so I hope that you can get back in the air soon, my friend. Stay safe. Thank you. Uh, stay healthy. <laughs> Uh, be prosperous, be legendary, and we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thank you. You too. Thanks. All right, man. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. I want to thank Simon for incredible information, um, awesome, awesome training, uh, awesome insights, awesome experience, being so willing to let us sort of dissect his channel and his strategy. And uh, each one of you, I want to congratulate you for being here, for having a learning um humble heart 
uh, for being excited to transform your life and your finances and grow as a person. And I want to meet you back here tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time for Wake Up Legendary. Peace.